Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the family room. We're glad you're here with us tonight. Our first time, Terry, to do it on a Wednesday on night. On a Wednesday night. Everybody's been working today. I'm sure uh, they're yes. tired so they can uh, sit back and relax yep. and listen to you and I. Get your coffee. we got our water and our bye. So kick back, relax. Maybe if you haven't ate supper yet, you can eat some dinner. Have While you're listening to us. Just enjoy. <laughs> I know I've been at work all day, so we're just going to decompress as we talk about the Lord because God is so good. He is. And we're going to talk about being established in grace. Yep. Um, and we're so excited because grace is the foundational truth yeah. in our life that we need to yes. walk in. Yeah, it it's, is. it's really the building blocks for every, it's the it's the beginning building block for everything else. Yeah. In our lives. It is. You know, Terry and I, you know, we were talking about what we were going to share tonight and what we were going to talk together about as we talk with you. And, you know, we were um, just really talking about our journey and that how, you know, we both, you know, were raised in homes where we loved God and, oh, absolutely. And, and absolutely had established our relationship with the Lord at a very young age. Yeah. But I think that that, um, we had established that relationship through a very performance-based um, view of God. Right. And I think that man, right, not too long after we got married, um, we really started searching. Um, yeah. As we had just started in the ministry, that we, we were worn out. Yeah. What you say? Oh, I mean, yeah. You know, I think yeah. in our minds. And we were young. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, we, we were under such a performance-based mentality in the early 80s, you know, uh, I mean, we, we heard some very wonderful grace teachers, even in the early 80s. And we began to listen to Andrew Womack in, oh, in the middle 80s. And he, he, he revolutionized yeah. our thought yeah. processes. Yeah. Oh, my and God. that was back before he was really popular. Yeah. You yeah. Know? When his and, ministry was really just beginning yes. back in those days. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, I remember I got, uh, you could get. Three tapes a week, I think, from Andrew. Every week, every week we got those. For <laughs> I had a, a whole stack of uh, cassette, cassette tapes, tapes. Do you remember those? From cassette Andrew tapes. Womack. So. Yes, but I tell you what, we were just, even though we, we were totally in love with God and we were, you know, youth pastors, we were serving, we were we were doing all the things we should do. But I, I think in our minds, I'm not talking physically, right. but in our minds, we just always never felt like we could get there. We never right. felt like we were enough. We ever felt like that there were so many things that were just outside of our reach. Or, or It was like a carrot on a stick being dangled out in front of us, and you could never really get to yeah, it. Yeah, you never do enough or work enough or right. be enough. Because if you're really, if you're approaching God based upon what you're doing for God, that yeah. you're a human doing instead of a human being, and you're not doing it from your place of your sonship and, right. and being his child. Right. And I think that, it, you, you, it's exhausting, yeah. you know, and, and the world is exhausting. And then, and then if God's not that safe place and that refuge in your own mind, yeah. and you're constantly having to work at feeling like you're making God happy or being enough or doing enough or right. talking to enough people and all the do's and don'ts and things that you feel like you have to do to yeah. be a good Christian. Right. And I think that's where we were at. And man, we started searching. We did. And, you know, Robin, I was just looking a while ago. I've got stacks of grace books yeah. from the from the middle 80s and the 90s. And, and you know, it's been a progressive thought process. Grace is not a, a new concept. I mean, you can go back and look at hundreds of years. You can go back to the early church. You can look at all different kinds of things. Sometimes we think, well, you know, the aspects of this is new in what we're seeing today. But I mean, I'm 59 years old and you can see the, the journey that we keep coming back within each generation people god tries to readjust our thinking and move us a little farther along and i i can even see the language you know uh of our journey of grace and we're going to talk about that in the weeks ahead yeah. of how how certain interpretations of words change and i'm sure we'll have some more changes in the future but how certain interpretation of words change that caused us to focus a little differently 
you know, but, but grace led us into all the stuff that we believe and all the stuff that we teach. Yeah. I mean, being established in the favor of God or the love of God and really believing that his favor and his love is completely unconditional. It is what really establishing your heart in that is what will begin to cause all the rest of the puzzle pieces to, to start together. fitting together. Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. once you really establish your hearts in that, and that's why what we're talking about is establishing our hearts in grace. Yeah. Is because that is the foundation from which everything else comes together in our lives. And we'll look at this in, in uh, weeks ahead, but I love Ephesians 2 7 oh, yeah. because it says that God will show us in his kindness, in his love, in his goodness. Yeah. Uh, the exceeding riches of his grace, really grace. There are overwhelming depths of grace. In other words, whenever you begin to see that God is the person of grace, whenever you begin to uh, attach who God is and his character into grace, uh, there are overwhelming depths that will move you, Robin, out of some of the doctrines that we had. In other words, whenever, you know, you remember in the early days, whenever I began to get a hold of grace and, and I'd come running to you all excited and <laughs> say, so this can't, that what we believed about this, it goes totally against grace. Yeah. So then what we believe about this particular subject has to be influenced by the overwhelming riches of his grace. And so then it would move us a little further. And sometimes it felt like we took two or three steps forward and a couple of steps back. But but here we are. Yeah. You and know. we often encourage you if where no matter where you're at on your journey of understanding, in where wherever you're at on your journey of grace and really being established in the grace of God and the love of God in your life, yeah. man, just keep moving forward because it just gets better and better Absolutely. and better. And God helps us deal with with our wrong beliefs. And sometimes you didn't even know you have those wrong belief systems sure. until you really start understanding certain things like you were saying that right. it's all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh. But you know, and but what's so exciting is it brings such rest. I think I didn't realize just how much pressure I put on myself sure. and, and and how hard it was for me to rest in my relationship with God. Right. I mean there's a lot of work to be done in life in general and, and just in being a family and being uh, yeah. you know and, and being parents and being grandparents and being going to work and just all the things. And I think that what God wants us to do is He wants us to rest in our relationship with Him. But if we have this perfect performance-based mindset in our relationship with God, we find no rest there. Right. Because we're just, we always feel like we're having to do something to to really keep ourselves established in His love. And the truth is, is we don't have to do anything. He loved us before the foundations of the world. He is He uh, is constantly bringing us back to the original place that He in intent in our lives. Are, right? And that's to have a relationship with Him. Yeah. Well, Robin, as we as we get in here tonight, we're going to start unpacking yep. uh, some things about grace, and and you really can't talk about grace without talking about peace. Um, you know, all of the New Testament epistles pretty much begin uh, begin with grace and peace. Right. Peter said, "Grace and peace be multiplied unto you," and so. Uh, there's a constant theme in the New Testament, New Covenant epistles that that the only thing that comes from God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ is grace and peace. Yeah. And it's his favor. It's his empowerment. And we'll look at some definitions. Right. There's all kinds of definitions out there of grace and peace. But really, uh, peace is about God wanting us to be whole. Once you begin to come into grace, it will lead you into peace, which is wholeness and rest. And once you understand some basic things, uh, then it sets your life uh, in a in a tone uh, that you can just embrace everything that God has for you in your life. What I still have to do every day on this journey, Terry, is I have to, if I am feeling frustrated and worn out and overwhelmed, yeah. I have to ask myself, what am I focusing on? You know, because I think every day I have to decide that my heart has to be established in grace. And when we're talking about our heart, we're talking about our mind and our emotions. Right. And that, that I have to every day choose 
to allow myself to have my heart established in grace. Because otherwise, you know, I can I can feel overwhelmed. I can feel stressed out from just life sometimes and, and the things that we're going through and the things that we're dealing with in life. And I think God wants us to say, you know, he wants our heart to be established in grace. And I think that's where Hebrews 13, 8 through 9, Terry, is right. so good. I'm going to read it to us out of the New King James Version. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do not be carried about with various strange doctrines, for it is good that the heart be established by grace, not with foods which have not profited those that have been occupied with them. Okay, Robin, let's let's dig in here a little bit. The first thing that comes to my thought process as I read Jesus Christ the same yesterday, yes. today, and forever. It's something that you and I talk about all the time. If Jesus is the same, then God the Father yes. is the same. Jesus one. and God are one. Yes. And so Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So the thing that that hits my thought process here is that he's saying here uh, that he is the same all the time. And then he goes in and and talks about the this grace thing being a good thing that stabilizes or or establishes your foundation, your your heart, your mind, your will, your emotions in in grace. So those two things are really connected so uh you can't you can't remove grace from who god is Thank so god. grace yeah. is the is the person of god yeah. is the person of of jesus christ and you know we were talking about how hebrews is understanding audience relevance yeah. you know it's so important to understand who these letters were written to remember right. we were reading someone else's mail right obviously it's we take and glean truth for ourselves from sure. this but he was writing this to the Jews that were kind of the the the, um, the Jewish people that were coming out of the old covenant into the new covenant, right, and that were and then he was they were being tempted to to add things to the teachings of Jesus, or just to go back up underneath the law entirely. Well, Terry, how many times have I done that? Even though right. it is so tempting to like revert back to what's familiar, right? Even though we might not like what is produced in our lives. It, when we get under pressure, yeah. sometimes it's easy to revert back to wrong belief systems. And I think that's what these guys were tempted yeah, by. The pressure was. was on the Romans were putting pressure on the Jews. There was a lot of pressure that they were being um, um, uh, criticized and, and um, I don't know what the persecuted. Right, persecuted. That's the right one. Persecuted yeah. um, to, to, by, by the people that were still operating under the old covenant system to come back to that. Right. And, you know, and it was and, and, and it was familiar. And I'm sure when the pressure was on, it was tempting. And this is what he's saying that it's you've got to keep your heart established in, in grace. Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. And the foods that they were talking about, those were those like that represented the rituals. The, the, All the, the old covenant yeah, system, the, the whole yeah. The whole yeah. old covenant system, and it goes on to say here in the Hebrews thirteen nine that the thing that they were occupied with under that old covenant right. that it didn't profit them anyway. No. So why would you want to go back up underneath something, even the thought processes of something that didn't profit you? And and so yeah. we could apply that to us today. But I love this first part here. It says, do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines. So if you attach Jesus Christ as the same yesterday, today and forever to not being carried about with various and strange doctrines, uh, various and strange doctrines would be any of these meats, any of the old covenant system that they had been operating up underneath. And so. He, he was telling them, stay connected with who you know Jesus is, who you know the Father is, yeah. and uh, don't be carried about. Because the thing about it is, is various and strange doctrines. The King James says divers doctrines, and I used to say those were the deep ones. <laughs> but they carry you about, and they leave you in some of the strangest predicaments emotionally, yes. uh, mentally. And and so, but grace will establish and stabilize your heart and 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 get you founded uh, to the point that uh, that 
you're not even concerned about conflict going on around you because grace is going to empower you uh, to go through the conflict. Sometimes, Robin, you and I talked about this a little bit, but sometimes we think that we need to have a, uh, a peace. Uh, we, we think that a peaceful life is only about having the absence of conflict. Or difficulty. Or difficulty. Yeah. But grace will empower you and grace, God's favor, empowers you and gives you something that you did not have uh, uh, awareness of in your moment. If you can get if you can have awareness of the fact that you've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, you've been given everything you've got. The riches of God's grace is already within you. And if and if you understand that then that will move you. There was a real time in my life where I, I thought if I had enough faith that I could have enough faith to not have difficulty in my right. life and not have um, circumstances that were hard to go through. And I and when then when I would face difficult circumstances, I felt like I just failed because that was my belief system. I thought that my faith was about having faith and to have so that, so that I would not go through hard times. And then when I would go through them, I would just feel so defeated. I felt like I'm inadequate. I don't have enough faith. There's nothing. And then I was really defeated to even trust God through the circumstance because right. I just felt unworthy. Yeah. But the truth is, is that, that God's grace is brings us through the circumstances. Right. It is not about that we're not going to face hard things, but what we can do is we can rest in the middle of change. We can rest in the middle of things that are difficult or people that are struggling around us or, or in things that I'm facing that are difficult. It's about grace empowers us to rest because we know that we're not alone because God is with us because we're favored. That even when we don't look like we're favored on the outside, we really know that we are favored and that God is yeah. at work and that he's working in us and through us. And we're going to be able to get through those things. Well, Robin, think about what you said earlier about audience relevance. But think about what the oh what God. the early church was going the through. Coming, coming into, the new, coming oh into the new covenant, uh, leaving 1,500 years of law and animal sacrifices and feast days and all the things that they were involved with. Yeah. And, and so... The writer of Hebrews, I at least think Paul Paul influenced the writer of Hebrews. Some people think that Paul didn't write it. I don't. I don't. I don't know one way or the other. But, but, but the writer of Hebrews was telling them, "Get your heart established in grace." And whenever it says, "For it is a good thing," uh, that uh, that those words in the Greek literally are talking about your your heart is made a valuable and beautiful place for use if your mind, will, and emotions are established in grace, in the favor of God, yeah. that God is going to empower you in the middle of your situation. Yes. And once you be believe that God is going to help you, no matter what's going on, no matter what you find yourself in, then peace is going to be the next thing that's going to come. Wholeness, uh, peace of mind. Uh, you'll be as steady as a rock whenever everybody around you is going nuts. You're going to be steady. You're going to be whole in the middle of this thing. Well, you're going to be able to let go. I don't, I don't know about you, but just letting go of control of yeah. everything. Because when I know that God favors me and God loves me and that he is walking this journey out with me, I can let go. And, 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 and when you, because you really can't rest until you just let go. Right. Until you do when you keep trying to control everything right. yourself. You know, one of the things I love, one of the definitions of yeah. grace is it's a merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence, his holy influence upon souls. Yeah. I love that. I, love I mean, that. it is his his influence, his favor, his influence on our mind yeah. and our emotions. Yeah. And man, when you're established in the love of God and when your focus is on that and when you take a step back when you want to feel stressed out and you take a deep breath and you remind yourself 
I'm not in this by myself and that God loves me and that he's for me. It doesn't matter what I see going on around about me. God is walking this with me. God didn't create those circumstances. There's nothing evil that comes from God, nothing bad that comes from God. God only brings good and helps us walk through the things that we go through and and bring good from everything that we face. And he's at work in the hearts of us and the people around us. And we can rest in that and let go and rest. Man, the and that's whenever things really begin to manifest and things begin to happen. I might actually be able to hear what God is saying. Yeah, in your moment. In my moment, if I quit working and working and working in my own mind to try to figure out all the answers to it and just rest yeah. in him. So, Robin, uh, uh, Strong's definition, I, I, you gave, I think that was Thayer's, out of Thayer's, yeah. that, that you read that. Yeah. I like Strong's definition, the basic definition for grace is favor, but Strong's also says, especially the divine influence upon the heart in its reflection in life, including gratitude, uh, benefit, favor, gifts, so so whenever God's grace, whenever we become aware of it, it's not that it's, it's given, always it's been always there. been there. It's always been there. It, it's, and it didn't change whenever we went from uh, Malachi to Matthew, grace didn't change. No, it didn't well, even change at the cross. In fact, no. the cross was just his complete demonstration of, of his grace. favor and his yes. love and his Toward grace. Toward our lives. He yeah. was just trying to change our view of who God was. And... Of who we were and who we had been all along. I love, I I think the first time grace, of course, it's a different word than the Greek word charis that we're, that we are reading from here in the New Testament. But the Old Testament, the first time that I see grace, um, the word grace in the Old Testament was whenever Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah found grace. In other words, Grace was always there. Grace was can't find something that's not there. No, grace was uh, prevalent in the Old Testament, but their understanding of it was yeah. very minute. It was a mystery. Yeah. The New Testament said yeah. to them, yeah. Jesus began to open up that mystery of 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 God's favor towards our lives. God and God hadn't ever changed. That's why I love this. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh so. So even in the Old Testament, God's grace was there. They may not have known it. Even in the New Testament, God's grace is always here. Well, just think about but it. we may not be aware of it. Well, think about our own journey. I mean, think of all the years of where we were raised and, and we and we understood a certain favor and love of God, you know, because that's how we came to, to enter relationship with God. But, right. we, but we definitely were taught that it was about that we were sinners and that we oh, didn't man. and that it was undeserved. It was not it was we didn't deserve it. But the truth is, is God has always considered us deserving. Absolutely. He's always loved us. And that grace, that view, God was always like that. Just that we had to discover that. We had to awaken to that. And man, we have to awaken to that every day. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. So you know, and that, so I know we were going to wait on talking about this, but I really feel like we're supposed to, <laughs> because really at, as, uh, as we, uh, and we, maybe we'll talk about this again. We have said for years, I mean, I just pulled out Joseph Prince book, unmerited favor. And if you look at the definition of unmerited, it's, uh, talking about undeserving. And I don't think I ever really saw that, but in, in our moment, Robin, in the middle 80s, as we begin to come into grace, right. we would use language. And this is one of those things. We would use the language of unmerited, um, meaning that, you know, we couldn't work for it or earn it. And that is that is true. But also, we didn't deserve it. We, we put that on there. And and that is not true. That that part of that. So. Um, but that's what we were talking about. So I'm that. Yes, in that moment. Because, because we had been under a performance based mentality, and because we were dealing with feeling so unworthy, that when the first time we really began to hear grace was like, okay, undeserved to us meant I don't have to work for it. Right. I mean, it it 
it helped bridge, even though it's not completely accurate. Right. In that moment in For our us, life, it, it was it, a bridge. It, it was a language bridge it that got us from one point the, to the yeah, other. It yeah. helped us see something yeah. that we hadn't been able to see before. Yeah. I mean, now we see that God has always loved us and always favored us, and he never looks at it as, as undeserved. Ephesians chapter 1, we, we were blessed with every spiritual blessing. And when did that happen? Before the foundations yeah. of the world. Yeah. Picked us out before the very foundations of the world. I love what Ephesians says about that. I mean, yeah. it we is were accepted, loved, blessed, forgiven. Favored, we yeah. were forgiven before we ever did anything yeah. wrong. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's never. <laughs> See, been. that's the overwhelming riches of his grace in our moment. I know, and it's just such a mind shift to think that God, and not for one moment, has ever looked at me as undeserving of his love. And he has always looked at you and me and everyone else as. In his favor, and, and he's wanting us to be aware of it and acknowledge it and embrace and it. Change the way we look at ourselves. I think we have to ask ourselves honestly: How much do I feel shame and un, and undeserving and unworthy right. of love? Right. I mean, I think with that happens more in our thinking than what we realize. Especially when you come up against something hard in your life, or something that is negative, or someone says something negative, or circumstances of working like out like you're thinking, then you think often somehow I've done something to deserve all of this, and right. that is such a lie. And really, that lie is because we are we are emotional emotionally attached to that lie. It is producing things in this physical realm. That's why we've got to get lies. It creates responses. It does. I mean, I begin. I my beliefs um, shape my choices and shape your world that is around. Right. And so, if I have belief systems that are opposite. Of the fact that God loves me, God favors me, I'm worthy. I've always been worthy. Yeah. And it's not based upon my performance, it's based upon who God says I am. Yeah. Then that is going to shape my choices in, in the way I respond to the things that I'm dealing with in my yeah, life. Absolutely. And and, and and I'm gonna be a little to rest. Because I don't know about you, if I'm if my mind is like in overdrive and can't rest. I can't even hear right. what God's saying to me. I was like, here's my own voice screaming right. at me. Yeah. I don't mind going crazy yeah. sometimes. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else feels like that, but sometimes that's that that's where I'm at some days. And you know, and God loves me and calls me worthy in, in those moments, but he wants yeah. me to walk in it. Yes, absolutely. He wants me to experience it. He doesn't want it just to be yeah. be about doctrine. Yeah. And and the thing is, Robin, again, as we're coming to a close here, uh, that went fast. Uh yeah. But, um, you know, you know, as God is influencing our hearts um, with his kindness yeah. and his favor towards our lives, uh, we have to open ourselves up to receive that. Yeah. If we don't receive that, then we're going to be carried about with every oh various and strange yeah. doctrines and it will if you're not established in grace, things will come along and, and pull you away, pull from, you away what, from the fact that God has always been a God of grace. And, and, and what Jesus modeled, I just, oh, I mean, wow. I mean yeah. Jesus yeah. came and, and to show us the father. He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And yeah. how did he treat everybody? I mean, he treated everyone, included everyone. And he was included. good. To everyone, I mean, to the to the people that under the old covenant would have been were rejected, could should have been stoned, should have, were were dejected. And he treated them with value and worth. I mean, I completely yeah. believe that's why people followed him like they did. Yeah. In the end, because he, and look at what he said. He says, "I came to, to as a physician to heal those yeah. who were broken." broken. Yeah. yeah. I mean, so Robert, and and as we get in this the next few weeks. Uh, grace is a an exclusion. It, it's inclusionary, if I can say it like that. Inclusive grace is of inclusive a, of everyone, and we're going to keep talking like that yeah. and um, bring our thought processes into the fact that God includes you. See, if you don't believe you're included in the favor of God, then you will think, well. 
I'm separated from God or I'm opposite of God. But if we can begin to teach people that everyone is included in this favor, Jesus went to the cross, not just to uh, help people that would accept him. Jesus went to the cross so that everyone would see the reality of their worth. And so everyone would be included in that. I love that John 3.17 says, God didn't come into the world to condemn the world, but that through him, the world might be saved. What is he saving? He's saving our thinking. He's changing yeah. our thinking, not saving us. Like, like the only thing part of this is we've never been lost from God. We've been lost in our thinking about who God yeah. was and about who we right. were. Yeah. And, yeah. and he came to save us. He didn't come to bring condemnation. He came to help us come back to our original identity and understand who he was right. and who he's always made us to be. So we need our hearts established in grace. I love Matthew 11, yeah. 28, especially yeah. at Turning yeah. Point Church. Yeah. It's pretty familiar out of the message. Oh, but I, I can never read the scripture enough because it so speaks to me. And look who he was writing to. He's writing to Jews who were under the law, yeah. but I think we can apply this to oh us God. as well. Absolutely. Are you tired? And there's a lot of Christians that are tired. Okay. Are you worn out, okay. burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. That's what grace will do to you. Okay. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. And I want to say this, you know, as we close up, that this week, and if you're feeling stressed out and you're feeling worn out, then I want you just to think about where your mindset's at. It, are you trying to do everything yourself? Are you trying to fix everything? Are you trying to make everything okay around you? Are you yeah. trying to do it all on your own? Or, or are you? do you believe that you're loved by God and favored by God and that God absolutely is on your side. And so can you take a step knowing that take a step back and rest and yeah. know that you, that you don't have to, to fix everything. You no. don't have to, do you don't have to fix nothing. No, in fact, and in that place of rest and peace that comes in your mind because of what you're thinking on and, the, and your mindset, you're really actually going to be able to hear God give you direction Yeah, and, he, and you're going to be able to, Feel the peace that he has. And that, you. Robin, is whenever you're empowered. Oh you're empowered God. to, you're empowered in your marriage and raising your children at your job, at church, yes. no matter where you're at, you're empowered uh, to do something far greater than you could have done just on your own yes. because you're not on your own. You're, you're coupled with God and his grace yes. towards your life. Your we, favorite. Yeah. <laughs> well, we love you guys. And yeah. we will. Thanks see for you, listening. Yeah. We'll see you here next Wednesday night at seven o'clock. Be in the family room. Be in the family room. See ya. Bye.